Welcome to another video. We have a very nice exercise for learning how to do proofs or at least to think about the behavior of numbers and fractions. So we have positive numbers x, y, and z. And we're told that if you add x and y and z, you're going to get 1. Prove that the sum of the reciprocals is greater than 3, strictly greater than 3. Now, I solved this in three different ways, and I'm going to show all three different ways. And if you have another way beyond what I'm going to show, I would like you to leave it in the, in the comment section like you generally would do. And this is going to be fun. Let's get into the video. I'm going to start from the third way, which is the easiest way, which is the most obvious way to solve this. Because my first way, I did a lot of number theory claims, but this one is just straightforward. Okay, and how do I do it? Method one. So, observe. 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z is equal to, instead of writing 1, I'm going to be writing x plus y plus z. I actually didn't think of that until much later. I see that this is x plus y plus z over x plus x plus y plus z over y plus x plus y plus z over z. What do you observe? You notice that you can split each of these such that this becomes x over x plus y plus z over x. So we can actually say this is equal to x over x is going to be 1. 1 plus y plus z over x. And the second one is going to be plus 1 plus, because this will give us 1, and then you have x plus z over y, x plus z over y plus. And the third one is going to be, this is going to give us 1, and you're going to be left with x plus y over z, 1 plus x plus y over z. Do you see what's going on here? This is equal to 3. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is already 3, right? Plus the remaining, so we can put all of these together and call it some number. Now, no matter how small this number is, because this is positive, everything here is positive, so this is a positive number, positive, positive. No matter how small it is, we're going to be adding it to 3. So the answer you're going to be getting is definitely greater than 3. This is greater than 3. So therefore, we know that 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z is greater than 3. That is the first way to show this. Let me show you how I did it the first time. I looked at this and I went, I have x plus y plus z and all of them are positive numbers. So there are two cases, okay? Whenever you get any two numbers, it doesn't matter what they are. It is either they are equal or they're not equal, right? Any two numbers or three numbers are equal or not equal. So that's what I said. It's either all of these numbers are equal or they're not equal. So I took the first case. Let's assume they're all equal. Suppose case one, I have x equals y equals z. Okay, that implies x must be one third. There is no other way, right? If this equals this equals this and they add up to one, then it means this has to be one third, right? Okay, 
So if x is equal to one third, then it means y equals one third and z equals one third. That means x equals y equals z equals one third. So that one over three, one over x plus one over y plus one over z will be equal to one over one third plus one over one third plus one over one third which is equal to three plus three plus three which is equal to nine which is greater than three done if they're equal right this one is so obvious now let's go to the second case so the second part of my proof when I considered case two is when they're not all equal. Now, if x is not equal to y and not equal to z, it means x has to be different. And different means it is either greater than or less than, right? Now, so even the, um, the pigeonhole principle says that they, if you take the average of three numbers, as in this case, one of them has to be less than the average unless they average, unless they're all equal. But if they're not equal, then one of them has to be less than the average. And one of them has to be greater than the average. At least. Okay, they can, if they're not equal to the average, then at least one of them is less than the average, and at least one of them is greater than the average. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say, case two, if x, if x, y, z are not all equal to one third, okay, which is the supposed average, then it means one of them has to be less than one third. Then, by the pigeonhole principle, pigeonhole, pigeon, principle one of them is less than the average and that's the secret if one of them so without loss of generality let's say X uh, let X be less than one-third Okay, without loss of generality. Okay, so let's say that x is the one that is less than one third, then it means that one over x, if you flip this, is greater than three. And if already one of them is greater than three, it doesn't matter what you do because all the rest are positive, they will have to be greater than three. Then one over x plus one over y, plus 1 over z, no matter how small these are, is already greater than 3. And I'm done. In both cases, this is the case. Now, this is what I did the first time because it was more interesting, okay? But there is something else that we've got to use. <laughs> and that one, it was while I was doing research and I looked on... Okay, if you're trying to learn stuff in, in mathematics, you might want to try Wikipedia because Wikipedia just has a bunch of stuff that we never, just Google it and Wikipedia shows up, you read and you go, oh, I didn't know that. So Wikipedia is your friend when you're doing math research, more accurate than politics or entertainment news. Okay, math. <laughs> this is method three and it uses the mean inequality chain. If you do math competitions, it is very wise of you to know this chain, okay? There are four types of means that we generally compute. The first one, or the most common one, is the arithmetic mean, which was what I used here in dividing by three when I said they were all equal. That's the most common one. How you, your grade is computed is arithmetic mean, which is, so let's put it in the chain that's going to be here. The arithmetic mean is going to be here, AM. But the arithmetic mean is always less than what we call the quadratic 
mean. Now, the quadratic mean is what is called the root mean square. So what you do first is you square the numbers, you take the mean, and then you take the root. That's why it's called the root mean square in the opposite direction of the sequence of what you do. So we call it the quadratic mean. But before the arithmetic mean, you have the geometric mean, which is you multiply everything together and take the square root. So, or you take the nth root rather. So this is going to be the geometric mean. We'll call it GM. And then the last one, which is relevant to the problem we're solving, is the harmonic mean, which is HM. So the harmonic mean is less than the geometric mean, which is less than uh, the arithmetic mean, which is less than the quadratic mean. Now, for this problem, the quadratic mean is not relevant, and the, the harmonic mean is relevant because we have the reciprocals of numbers. So when you take the reciprocals of numbers, you're dealing with the harmonic mean. When you take the when you multiply them together is a geometric mean, but there's no multiplication. So it's going to be the arithmetic mean and the harmonic mean that we're dealing with. And as you can see, the harmonic mean is less than the arithmetic mean. And that's what we're going to use in this case. Or less than or equal to. I'm sorry. Less than or equal to. Not strictly. It depends on what's going on. It's possible they're all the same. Let's write it here. The harmonic mean of a set of numbers is equal to the number of numbers you're dealing with, the alpha n. So here we're dealing with n number of elements in the set that we're dealing with. That is the harmonic mean. And this is going to be the arithmetic mean. You already know it. N. So. In this case, for this problem, the n we're using is 3 because that's the number of elements we have and we have all of them. So we can write the harmonic mean, but we know the relationship that this is less than or equal to this, right? So let's do the work. 3 divided by 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z, right? In this case, it's going to be the sum of the three of them, which is going to be this plus this plus this, which is equal to 1. That's going to be x plus y plus z divided by 3. So here, our harmonic mean is what we have here. But our arithmetic mean is 1 over 3. So what we're saying is, oh, this is 1 over 3, so this is equal to 1 over 3. So if we use this inequality at this point, let's, let's clean this up. So since the harmonic mean is less than or equal to the arithmetic mean, we can say this is less than or equal to this. We can say 3 over 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z is less than or equal to 1 over 3. Nice. So what does that mean? It means that if we flip, do we have to flip? Uh, what can we do here? Yeah, we can flip this side and flip that side, right? OK, this implies that 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z, with this sign changes to, is greater than or equal to, um, this is going to be, oh, this is over 3, but you multiply, it's going to be 9. Actually, you can do the cross multiplication here, because all these numbers are positive, so we don't need to worry about negatives. And that gives us, um, um, that gives us 9, OK? If all of these are greater than or equal to 9, it is obviously greater than 3, because the smallest that this can be is 9, is greater than 3. Strictly greater than 3, because the smallest value of this, when equality happens, is 9. Otherwise, it's supposed to be bigger than that.
Wikipedia is a rich source of information, so you might just want to just Google. Come on, just Google, and then whatever shows up, read it up. Try to understand it. That's how I learn, okay? Never stop learning, because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.